and welcome to oh Neighborhood God. Update as we continue our conversations on the world of COVID and how um, various folks of the community are being impacted by it. And when we think of the COVID pandemic, you can't help but think of our children in public schools and parents and what they are going through um, during this, this challenging time. With me to guide the conversation today are members from the Family Resource Center um, at New Bedford Public Schools. Welcome, Erin Duart. Orlenda Jackson, is that correct? Yes, thank you. And Jeriel Vergney. Welcome right. to Neighborhood Update. Thank you for having us. So your team provides wraparound services to students and families within the city. Explain, either one of you can, can jump in. What is wraparound services? What does that look like? Yes. Um, so first of all, thank you for having us. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Gerald Verne. I'm the wraparound manager for the New Bedford Public Schools. And um, my team on this call and various others throughout the district, we comprise the wraparound department uh, for the New Bedford Public Schools. So when we think about wraparound services in New Bedford, what we're really talking about is a couple of things. One, it's macro work around systems building and micro work around really supporting students and families. So the systems piece is around creating safe and supportive schools um, that really impact climate and culture. Um, you know, the, the, the climate and culture of, of, the, of the buildings in which our kids go to, um, the climate and culture in which we're engaging and working with our families. Um, the other piece is around engaging families in the community, right? Making sure that um, whatever we're thinking about from the lens of family engagement, that it speaks to the needs of the community and if there's spaces in the community that we need to think about how to better uh, collaborate and work together, that we have the space and the capacity to do that. I think really the philosophy behind this work is really around planning, right? We're always planning. We're a department that's always growing, that's always evolving. Why? Because our community's needs are never just defined, right? Um, if, if there's anything that speaks to that, it's COVID-19, right? We never knew that we would find ourselves in a pandemic. And the reality is, is that we had to shift, not only the way we did instruction, not only the way schools looked and felt, but also how do we engage our community? How do we engage our families? So one of the things that you're gonna to hear today from Orlando and from Aaron is how we've had to adapt and shift and mm -hmm. the different opportunities that we're sharing. Um, we've had to quickly move from family engagement, which we typically think of sitting right together. Right now we're on a remote Zoom call um, in many ways, we'd be sitting together in a room talking face to face, right? So we've had to shift a lot of our practices to a digital world. Um, and that meant that as a department, we had to shift our practices as well. Um, our department is comprised of um, wraparound coordinators who are at the building level, um, family engagement specialists, and attendance officers. Um, and all of those roles are really the, the, the positions that um, really make up the wraparound services department, but it's really the arm of the school district that's in the community. It's the arm of the school district that's touching and working with families, working with community partners, um, and on this call today. And I'm so glad um, that these services are available because I know at the very core of the work that you do, it's about ensuring the success of students. And there are many students who just don't, they don't have that support. They don't have that support from their parents. And, and sometimes it's not because the parents do not want to give them the support. Sometimes they don't know how or they are not capable of that. Um, and I do want to commend all of you um, for thinking outside of the box during this pandemic and still being able to provide these valuable services to students and family. I'd like to hear from each one of you. Um, you introduced yourself, Jeriel, as the manager. Um, Erin and Orlando, Orlando, Linda, what is your, your position within the Family Resource um, Center? 
So within the wraparound department, my name is Erin Duart. I am the lead wraparound coordinator. Um, I supervise the uh, eight wraparound coordinators who are in our schools. And I also do the systems work for our family engagement centers. Okay, and Or Orlando? Orlando. Yes, Orlando Jackson, I am the lead family engagement specialist and I collaborate with the wraparound coordinators and the family engagement specialists to provide educational opportunities for our family. So when I think of when I think of students and when I think of this virtual learning, the first thing that comes to mind is these Chromebooks and, and homework and, and technical difficulties. And how are you engaged with all of that? So within our, our department, we're responsible for setting families up with internet access or hotspots. So since um, we started doing that in about May, we've connected 658 families to the internet. Out of that number, 273 of them received Comcast Essential Codes, which means that they got free access to Comcast for six months. And then we have 385 families who got hotspots through the Sprint and uh, Verizon um, one million project. So what happens when your, your Chromebook, your computer isn't working and you can't get your homework done and you're stressed out about that and you're, gonna, you're thinking you're gonna get in trouble? How do you help the students in those situations? Do they call your office or how does that work? So what the family should do is call the student's school directly. Mm -hmm from the school that they are having problems logging on or that there just might be a little interruption in learning for that day for the student. When, we t when I talked earlier about parents sometimes not being able to assist students, sometimes it's because of language access. Um, and I know that your office provides support in that area as well. Um, how does that work? Actually, we are um, having computer classes for families. For the first time, we are doing in-person computer classes through COVID. Excellent. Excellent. And we are dedicating three hours on Saturdays. We have one this Saturday, November 7th at Normandin from 9 to 12. And next Saturday, November 14th at Demison Memorial from 9 to 12. In those three hours, our families will learn more about the basics of computer, but also Windows program. They will learn about internet, how to navigate the school department website, but also the children's school website too, how to go to this virtual classroom, which now it's called Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. We'll teach the families how to create an email account. And the most important thing, how to use Zoom, because nowadays we're having many meetings through That's Zoom. That's our world. Right. Absolutely. Uh, we also are doing some um, math homework virtual support group for family, mm -hmm. which is just 30 minutes on Thursdays. We'll be mm -hmm. online and we'll, we'll virtually, I'm sorry, I'll repeat that. We'll virtually meet for 30 minutes on Thursdays. And the teachers will provide strategies to parents on how to support their children with math homework. We know it's not the same as it was before. Right, so we'll teach the families the very understanding of the 21st century skills. You know, and I would ma imagine, speaking of language access, that um, your staff, Portuguese, Spanish, um, are there any other languages that are offered through your, your team? These classes are provided in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and Quiche. But the district is also utilizing a um, interpreter line where they have more than 350 languages and that line is available 24 seven. So the teachers are connecting with the families through this line and the school staff connecting with the families through the interpreter line. There, there's two, can I add something? Yes. Um, one of the things I wanted to add is that, um, you know, as a department, um, we're, we're a department that works with multiple other departments, right? And one of the things that I wanted to, to share is that every initiative that we're talking about somehow touches another department, touches directly our schools. When we think about, you know, the interpretation lines, when we think about the language supports that are being offered, um, you know, we work closely with our ELL department um, here in the New Bedford Public Schools as well. When we think about the direct support, right, when kids are struggling with their Chromebooks, when families aren't sure how to log on, 
our schools are the main touch point for that, right? So as a system, we as a wraparound services department, we're trying to build a system, but when we really think about who, you know, who are the change agents, it's really the schools and the teachers who are now communicating directly with the kids, directly with the families. So in many ways, you know, a question such as like, how do we help a kid with a Chromebook? It's establishing systems at the district level, but it really comes down to the schools and they're doing so much work at the school level um, and just connecting with kids, having Zoom calls. There's just so much happening that I, I just wanted to share that I, our schools are doing a lot of that problem solving because um, who better can solve a problem than your child's teacher, than your administrator at your local Absolutely. school, than the counselor Absolutely. at the school. So I just wanted to kind of share that piece too. Absolutely. So what I hear you saying, Jeriel, is your, your um, services mostly is resources to know what all the resources are within that school system so that you can provide the support to the student and the families through referral of those resources. Um, and, but you're doing it in a way that is welcoming. Because, you know, it's very difficult, I think, for parents sometimes to, some parents are, are uncomfortable with asking questions or, um, and so having you at the, you know, having you in that position where you're the first level of contact for them, um, that's a very welcoming situation, I would think, for, for students and parents. So during COVID, you touched a little bit about that. Um, tell us more about how you've had to um, switch your services during COVID and how are you staying in contact with students who might have been, you know, regular uh, visitors um, to, your, to your centers? How do you keep that line of communication open during COVID? So one of the ways that we were um, communicating with families during uh, COVID, we were doing the South Coast Community Resource Group. We were doing their pop-ups every week. So New Public Schools had a table that was manned by our wraparound coordinators, and we provided our documents on uh, the phases of school opening, everything that we were doing from internet service in multiple language so that we could still keep that line of communication open with our families. We were also giving out school supplies and then we have our family engagement centers. We have nine throughout the city um, and our family engagement specialists are still working and manning those and they are are connecting with families through virtual platforms like Google Classroom, sending out mass emails. They all use a Google call number so that families have access to them. So through text messages, just phone calls, just thinking outside the box, just being wherever we could be to be an access point for our families and to give information to them. And are your family centers located in certain schools and what schools are you in? So they are located at New Bedford High School, Keith Middle School, Normandon Middle School, Roosevelt Middle School, Jacob Elementary, Renaissance, Gome School, and Hayden McFadden. And they are accessible to any New Bedford public school family. So they could call the centers. Um, they can also go onto our website and each center has an email address. And they can go to those centers for a variety of things if they just need information on local food banks or just who they should contact within their own school building. If it's not one of those, they can make contact with one of our family engagement specialists and they can help them navigate our school system or whatever resources that they might need within their own household. I think that's valuable information to share because most people, I know myself, I would think that you would have to be at the school. Your, your child would have to be a student at the school to utilize the resources, but you're saying that anyone in the city can contact any of those family resource centers for information that they would need for their student or just for services. Right, if they just need to connect, like I said, just with a food bank. We know that it's been tough with families on oh. 19. One of the big things that our family engagement specialists and reps were helping everybody with was with their PEBT cards. Just knowing how to call the number and just get it started so that you could use those cards during COVID. And, and when you talk about food, Many of our students in public schools receive free lunches, and we know for many children, two meals a day 
You know, they look forward to that breakfast and lunch. And some of them, you know, with COVID, we're not receiving that, but the schools did react to that. The schools did react to that and, and you were given out um, food at various locations. Is, is that true? Yeah, so um, since COVID began, um, we had, you know, I don't know the exact number of sites, but we had sites all around the city at our schools um, in which um, food was being distributed, lunches, but they also were packing breakfasts for the next day. Mm. Um, you know, so the, the school, you know, Aaron, I'm not sure if you have a, a number, but I know we've, you know, in the hundreds of thousands of meals right. have been handed out uh, since COVID began. Um, you know, it, definitely as a district, this was something that we took extremely serious, uh, seriously. We know the, the space that schools have in our communities. Um, and in many ways, some of the needs that we're able to meet. Um, and when COVID, when COVID hit, um, we had to think, you know, deeply about how do we support families understanding the complexities of what's happening, right? And, you know, our wraparound coordinators, our family engagement specialists have worked throughout COVID, throughout the pandemic. Um, we were in the pop-ups, um, even though, you know, 80% of many things were closed, right? So we've been out there supporting mm -hmm. families from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and we will continue to do that, right? Even as we continue, there's, there's pieces of this, to be honest, that have helped us evolve. Um, there's so many pieces, and I'd love for Orlando to share some of the, the things we've built that we're now offering families that we didn't have before. So I always like to say that sometimes through crises, we can continue to grow and evolve. And, and if anything, I think we take pride in that, right? As a, as a wraparound department that, you know, um, you know, adversity can bring about new creativity. Um, yes, and Orlando has some things that she's doing that is speaks to that. Um, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, so as we said before, now we are meeting virtually with our families. And one of the things is like they can connect with us when they're at home or after work or what they're driving sometimes through Zoom. So our families, we are providing um, virtual workshops for our families. Mm -hmm. These are 30 minutes and sometimes goes to 45 minutes because it's a nice conversation at the school um, community level. Mm -hmm. Many of the workshops are based on self-care. We know how important now it's to take a minute and take a break. So we are providing self-care. Um, we are providing um, Google Classroom support and how to navigate the school system itself but also how to communicate with the teacher through the school communication apps. Now the teachers are utilizing apps such as Class Dojo, Reminder, Blooms. So we are teaching the families how to use those apps. And for those families that English is not their first language, we also teach them how to um, change the language in the app. So you can text the teacher in Spanish and he will read the message in English. So language is not a barrier. Many of those workshops will be in our website this week and we'll share that with you. I think it will be a good option for our families to, to have the workshops in our website and they can just watch it at home when um, they're available. Besides yeah. that, we're also having the Family Institute for Student Success and it's first time in history that we're doing it virtually and we graduated families from Parker Elementary School and Parker families, congratulations, because we started before COVID we have to pause before when COVID hit, and we finalized the classes last week. So congratulations, partner. Awesome, congrats, awesome. Thank you. And on awesome on, on your great work. And it, it's just all about keeping, keeping us all connected. And I have a flyer here that Erin uh, sent to me, which I, I just think is, is awesome. And it says, we miss you. We want to be there for every student. Um, and then there's some information, contact information. Is this, Erin, a way that you just, when I had said earlier, you know, how do you keep the, the communication line open? How do you stay connected with that student? Sending them something like this every now and then might prompt them, I would think, to call or contact the office. Right, so that's part of our attendance um, initiative. So if there are students who might have missed a couple of days, we encourage the schools and the attendance offices to just send out a simple card that says, we miss you and want to connect with you with some information on who they can contact in their building, just so that we can hear them, see their face, 
you know, it's really important that we see every single one of our students. And that's Absolutely. the message. That, sorry, go ahead. You, are, you are so right, because I'm sure there are some students dealing with depression, you know, not being able to be in that normal setting. It's, it's a lot, you know, for our, for our students and parents to deal with all of this, as, as all of us. You know, and so there were good days and there were bad days. And so it is so important um, to, to go that extra mile and keep those communication lines open. Jerry, you were going to say something. No, I was just going to say that, you know, oftentimes when we think of school attendance, sometimes that might bring up feelings of, of negativity. But the reality is, is that we want to, we just want to connect with you. We want to see you. And we know that COVID-19 has impacted families dramatically. Um, so, you know, instead of just calling and saying, hey, I haven't seen, you know, your son or daughter, et cetera, we want to say, we miss you. What can we do? How can we collaborate? What's getting in the way? Who do we need to connect you with, right? And, and I think that that, all of our schools, our tennis officers, our teams, um, we've all been sharing that message. You know, just calling to say, we haven't seen you, what can we do? Um, re reframes, right, the conversation. So it's not about what's not going well, it's about what can we do to get on track considering yes. everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. That's, that's just so wonderful. And, um, you know, I, I'm so glad again that these services are available. Is the food still being distributed to families? Because now we're going to be getting into Thanksgiving and the holidays. Is that still ongoing? The food distribution? Yes. Yeah, so um, on the New Bedford Public School website, they do have a schedule on which schools you can go to and pick up uh, packaged meals. Yeah. Awesome. And some of the students are, some of the students are actually physically in the schools, correct? Yeah. So um, we have, uh, you know, we, we, we adopted a hybrid method. So um, the way the kind of schedule goes is that our students are divided into two different cohorts um, where we have a, 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 a large chunk of students coming in or a group of students coming in Mondays and Tuesdays. We have another group on um, Thursdays and Fridays. On Wednesdays, um, kids are not in buildings. We're doing a deep cleaning um, of buildings. Teachers are doing professional development. Um, but we also, have a, we also have a group of students of cohort that are also doing fully distance learning. And that's still happening from our teachers. Because um, as a district, you know, we wanted to make sure that we had multiple, multiple pathways. We knew that there were families who, um, even through hybrid, um, you know, still may have been concerned for COVID, you know, for, for safety reasons, et cetera. So we have, you know, another group of students that are doing full remote learning as well um, that aren't part of that hybrid as well. Is there a, a number for our viewers today if they want to contact your center because you know, when I think of how can the community assist you with what you do, you need information. You need information. So if there's any agencies that have, you know, information on their services that they want to share with your center, how would they get in contact with the Family Resource Center? Is there a number or an email? So if they wanted to provide a service or to get information, the best way for them to do that would be to contact myself or Orlando. Um, and I, my email is eduart at newbethodpublicschools.org. Or you could call our main number 508-997-4511. And my extension is 14106. Excellent. Is there anything, Jeriel, um, that we did not touch upon today that you would like to mention about your services? Um, you know, I think we, I think we, 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 we um, I think we shared a lot. I, I, I think if anything, we just want to share with our, you know, New Bedford community that we, they were here. We care. Um, we want, we want to support. Um, we want to help. We understand that there's a lot of challenges out there. Um, but we want to be part of the solution of what that looks like together. Um, the same as we partner with our community partners, we want to we want to partner with our families. I mean, I think, and I I guess I would say that the last piece is um, our our district website has a lot of information on there, um, and there's a tab on there, um, and maybe Orlando can speak a little bit 
more about that of where they can find the resources. Orlando, can you share a little bit about where they might go? Yes, am I able to share the screen? Hi, New Bedford Public Schools families. Here's a quick tutorial on how to navigate our website. Here's the home page. We'll scroll down a little bit and you will find important information about the full reopening information, new student registration, teacher email addresses, COVID-19 questions and answers, and the COVID-19 tracker. Here is our weekly update from the Superintendent Thomas Anderson. More flyers and information, news and what's happening in the district. Going back to the homepage, please click on parent, students, family engagement. Now we are under the family engagement tab and you will find the family engagement videos that will help you to support your child's education, school and everything in between. The videos are available in English, Spanish, Portuguese, Quiche and American Sign Language. While we scroll down, we have more information about our family engagement centers, where they're located, the center's hours, the calendar's event. Going back over here, you can select your child's school and your language of preference. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you all for stopping in today and you're welcome anytime to, to stop here and, and let us know of new activities or services. And again, I thank you for the important work that you are doing to make sure that our students are successful. So thank you very much. And it, it was a pleasure today speaking with all of you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching today, and we will see you next time on Neighborhood Update.